Hi guys, it's Kira. Okay, so I'm back. It's still day four. It's evening and here is my last meal of the day. A lovely savoury green juice. Okay, so if I show you here, we have one full chopped up huge ripe organic tomato bursting with flavour. Um, garnishing it. Oh, sorry, I just noticed. It's like a wee smiley face. How encouraging, eh? Okay, so that that's hope that's cheered you up. It's cheered me up. Oh, hiya. Okay, so anyway, we've got basil, tomato. Um, I was going to put a couple of stalks of celery in it, but I had to use it for the the carrot and celery juice that I just made there. Um, so here we have some fennel instead and have a little bit of leek. I'm hoping this isn't going to be too overpowering for, with the leek here, uh, but we'll give it a go. Uh, we've also got beautiful kale leaf with beautiful purple stem and we have lots of spinach just hiding under here and half of a red bell pepper. And we're also going to be using some rosemary and I think I'll be using some thyme in this as well. Okay, so I'll just mount the camera and get on with the juice for you. Great, okay, so let's get started. Try this huge big kale leaf first with that beautiful purple stem. So today on my, um, my fourth day juice fast, I've been finding it really, really, nice to not have to think about cooking. I certainly have not missed, well, I've been doing quite a lot of raw foods in general recently. So when I, I suppose when I say cooking, I mean arranging. Um, I do mostly just have, I've been trying to gravitate towards more of the steamed vegetables and steamed rice if I'm having cooked foods, unless I go on a stupid bender, food bender, which I have been, which has been known to happen recently and end up incorporating vegetarian, like, stodgy fry foods with um, refined white sugar and refined white flour. Um, I can't really have many preservatives and um, chemicals and preservatives in my food anymore because um, I do have a bit of allergic reactions to that nowadays so at least that's uh, forced me to really strip back my eating and get back to basics with um, most of about I would say about 95% of what I'm eating just now is fresh fruits, vegetables, herbs and some nuts and some seeds. So uh, I'm just going to check how my juice is getting on so far. Would you like to see my pulp? <laughs> uh, oh, one second. You can just see here, I'll just grab some and bring it over. You can just see here the how dry this pulp is. It's just, it's just the fibrous uh, plant cells left here. So I just thought it was worth showing you that. With the masticating juicer, uh, this is this is like a a cheaper end version, which would costs around the regions of about one hundred and sixty pounds. So it's a great investment. It's got a six year warranty, and it does all different sorts of things as well. It's a six in one juicer, so not only does it juicer but it homogenizes as well so I'll quickly show you the other filter. Okay so see in here right here we have the sieve that is currently in use which um, is responsible for uh, separating the, the fibre from the juice. Um, if you wanted to change the settings to the homogenizer um, you can chop up um, vegetables slices very thin, you can use it to um, make beautiful banana ice cream like I I've had a problem with bananas I've never really gotten on with them very well but um I, 
can sometimes ha I can have them in smoothies and it's fine, but I can never eat one just as it is. Um, however, see the banana ice cream. If you freeze your a couple of bananas overnight, and then you can just do this in a blender. You don't have to <laughs> use one of these. Um, you can put it in your blender or one of these, and it comes out uh, just beautiful and exactly like ice cream. If you still don't like the banana taste very much, um, I experimented with putting some uh, vanilla pod in. Uh, so I chopped up vanilla really small um, and incorporated that in. It tasted absolutely delicious. That with some um, frozen raspberries as well all mixed together. I think I'll have to show you that in another video. As you can tell, I'm fantasizing about food. So that's me done. So without further ado, let me stop this. Spatula! Okay, so, um, oops. So, yeah, not a lot of juices came out of that, and a lot of it's collected on top. So, as I showed you in another video, I just have to sieve gently, just move the spatula around to feed the juice through so that you're, you're getting the most out of your produce, and you'll be able to see just how much of the greens have been utilised and how little pulp there is left. Okay, so um, a good thing to also say about this um, the, this version of a slow juicer is when you're pushing the pulp, the soggy pulp through the sieve here, um, bear in mind that if you, see if I lift this up here, you can see on the underside it's still quite pulpy. So if you don't want to have that trace of any sort of fibrous pulp in your juice, you can um, refrain from straining it so much like I'm doing just now. And you can also actually use a handheld strainer to pour it through again to make it really nice and silky smooth, minus any fibre. Okay, so I've got two options for you about what to do next. Um, oh, I forgot to put in my herbs. I forgot to put in the rosemary and the... The time. Oh well, I think I will do the second option about what I was going to do and see how that gets on. Just bear with me, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so this is phase two of my savoury green juice recipe for this evening. I'm going to make it into a green soup. Now, this is again completely your preference, but for me tonight I am craving after some healthy fats. So I am going to apply a small amount of avocado and a tiny amount of chia oil and flax oil to the final mix, as well as some thyme and some rosemary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my juice I've just juiced, I'm going to pour it into the juicer, uh, sorry, the blender, the high speed blender, and I'm going to just take the tiniest amount of flaxseed oil tiniest amount of chia oil and I'm going to take a bit of avocado here try and do this one-handedly come on that's probably enough actually oh, oh well there you go uh, as you can see it's all just in here and then I'm going to sorry my hands are all messy going to put in some of the thyme and I'm going to put in a tiny wee bit of rosemary as well okay uh, and I'm going to stick the lid on juicer and I'm going to pulse <laughs> Okay, so get my soup bowl. Take this lid off. There we go. Let's have a look at what we have. Okay, so that's just made the soup quite creamy. Oh, that's a lovely texture. Okay, see how that's changed the texture? Oh, we've still got bits of avocado. So just maybe in future, um, 
stick stick the blender on for a bit longer. Might just fish the avocado. Oh, I suppose that might be quite nice just to experience little bits of avocado in the soup there. So as you can see, it is a very soupy texture. Okay, and if you um, if you wish, you can add some black pepper to it. Um, I'm probably going to taste it first before I do that, but um, I'll just be with you in a second with the taste test. Here we are. This this is my um, raw juice soup blended with some avocado and a couple of herbs. And I'm just trying to show you the texture here. I'm really, really happy with that texture. That is really good. That is really delicious. What I would say is, I mean, I do like my lemon and and my juices, but I think there's it's just maybe a wee bit too zingy lemon wise. So I would maybe cut it back to a quarter of a lemon for it. Mmm, I'm gonna really enjoy drinking the rest of that. Um, to counteract the lemon, I'm going to just crack some black pepper corns. See here, here we go. And um, if you fancy, you can get all decorative and maybe just. Uh, there we go, so that's my raw green soup for the evening.